Welcome back. Mm. Last time, I diagnosed my engine troubles and found out my car had blown ring lands. I could feel the air coming out of the oil filler cap. Unfortunately, the fix for this requires taking the engine out, so in this episode, I'll be pulling the engine so I can start the teardown process. The first thing I did was remove the front end of the car to try and get the core support out. My thinking was that with this out, it would be much easier to take the engine out. However, it didn't take me long to realize that the core support is welded in, and you can't actually get it out. Instead, what you have to do is pull the engine out up and over the entire front of the car. Regardless, I drained the radiator and pulled it out, which had to be done anyways. I then moved on to the accessories, including the belts, which had to be removed. I was able to get the power steering pump and AC compressor out of the way without removing the lines. This will make things easier later on since I won't have to refill the power steering fluid or recharge the AC system. The whole engine is on one connector. I am pleasantly surprised. I moved on to the intake manifold which was kind of a mess. I just found a vacuum hose that's been snapped and I don't think I did that. Ideally, I would have pulled the engine first and then dealt with this later, but since I didn't have an engine hoist yet, I figured I might as well take the intake manifold. Oh, we got another connector. If you know you have to disconnect already, it's not that bad, but if you try guessing at it, it will take you quite a while, like it did with me. Oh. So that's easy if you know what you're doing and what to disconnect, but very difficult if you don't know what order to do things. I tried disconnecting the downpipe, but it was a lot more difficult than I expected. Some of the nuts and bolts came out okay, but a couple of them I couldn't even get the open end of a wrench on. This is because the nut was too large and it was too close to the wall of the downpipe. So I had to take my Dremel and cut a slot in it, and basically mangle the whole nut until it came off. The worst part was a nut in the very bottom that I couldn't even see. I also couldn't get the wrench over this one, even with the open end. I had to use a mirror to see what I was doing, and then cut away at it slowly. Finally, I was able to pry the downpipe away from the turbo. I'd unbolted the downpipe from the rest of the exhaust system as well, so I was able to hang loose. This is what I had to do the nut in the bottom. I just had to cut it until it was mostly through, and then just pry in the turbo between the housing and the downpipe, and I just separated at long last. I finally got the chance to buy an engine hoist from Harbor Freight. It took me an hour or two to put the whole thing together, and now I'm ready to try pulling the engine out. At this point, I undid the bolts that were holding the engine to the transmission and tried to separate it. I tried lifting the engine up and then tapping on the transmission to separate the engine, but it didn't seem to work very well. Eventually, I realized I had to be a bit rougher with it, and I started to jam a screwdriver and a crowbar into the seam. This worked out right to separate one side of the engine, but there was still the other side I couldn't get to. I decided to remove the turbo so I can get better access to that side of the engine. With the turbo out, I could wedge a crowbar into that side of the seam. This finally popped apart the engine from the transmission. Ha! Now all I have to do is wiggle out the engine and pull it apart from the transmission. Finally, I was able to separate the engine, and I did have the transmission supported by a jack stand below, but it did take a small fall. Thankfully, nothing was damaged, but I was worried that if it fell anymore, it could have actually cracked something. I lifted the engine up out of the engine bay, and thankfully I had enough space to get it over the core support. 
I was curious if the clutch was original, so I popped off the pressure plate and took a look. Exidy. Exidy is actually an OEM clutch for the Subaru, so it's an original clutch. It still has at least 50% of its life left, which is surprising considering the fact that it's almost 15 years old. I guess that's just how good I am at driving stick. The flywheel looks fine, but it'll need a resurface. Taking a look around the engine, it was not in great shape. The exhaust rack was totally falling apart in front of the engine. The oil cooler lines are all rusty. There's some leaks here and there. Coolant lines are pretty brittle. The oil fill tube is leaking. It's not in horrible shape, but it'll need a fair amount of reconditioning. Well, now that the engine's out, it's time to tear it down. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video where I tear the engine down.